I want to first of all say congratulations to Nuclear Blast for their 25th anniversary. I'm certain there'll be another 25 years. Fantastic, Marcus. But the story for me begins in uh, a forest preserve in Illinois. I was on my way home from work, moving furniture all day, and stopped in for an old style or a Budweiser. I can't remember exactly, but we're in the forest preserve and sitting outside and hanging out. And I noticed two Harley Davidsons are parked and two bikers are hanging out talking. And the biker comes over to me. He's smiling, puts his hand out. It's uh, Joe from uh, Righteous Pigs. Joe Caper, and uh, he's talking, and he says, I, I got some information for you, Paul. You know, I've always been a really big fan of your music. I saw the Abomination shows and some master stuff, and I love the Death Strike, and we just found a new label. It's called Nuclear Blast, and the, uh, they're signing bands. It's underground music, and maybe something would interest you. And at this time in my life, there really wasn't much going on. I was just working and struggling, like, like always. And, and I gave him the cassette tape, and thinking like usual, I would never hear from the guy again or anybody. And maybe a week or 10 days later, I was contacted by this gentleman by the name of Slotko, who was working for Nuclear Blast at the time. And he ordered, uh, offered me an abomination contract. And uh, he sent some bootleg abomination shirts and master shirts. And oh, they were quite interesting. And probably a week to 10 days later, I also got an offer for master. And uh, this would change my life. Before you know it, uh, we recorded the records in 1989 and, and uh, 1990, and they were released. And we ended up going on tour with Nuclear, uh, with nuclear Blast and Punch and Stench. And a lot of things were really good. And I have to say that uh, it was a life-changing experience, this first meeting. Then uh, we flew to Europe my first time. I met Marcus. I was in his office. His, little small office, the first one, and, and uh, it was nice to meet the guy, and I was stealing stuff from him, you know, t-shirts and sweatshirts, packing them away in my bag. Thanks for that, Marcus. <laughs> and uh, I met Michael Trangert at the time, too, another character. He would eventually go on to, uh, to manage Punch and Stench, which was successful for him and good for him. And uh, Marcus uh, mentioned that maybe I should talk a little bit about touring and stuff, so a little short story. Uh, we were traveling on the tour in uh, 1990, freezing our asses off in uh, two uh, VW vans with no heat. You know, back in the 90s and stuff, it was much colder than it is today. Today it's relatively warm in November and December. We've had mild weather, but back in this day, it was the guys we were huddling together, you know, to keep warm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we had a show in uh, Austria, or maybe two shows on the tour, and the guys in Punch and Stench, they, uh, they had cold, a cold, whatever, they were sick, so they went home and didn't do the shows. And of course, we were laughing at them. Sorry about that, guys. And the tour was quite difficult. But anyway, on these two days off, I remember we were in the Alps and I had been drinking too much beer. And, and as the mentor said, uh, I rolled down the window, pissed out the window, and gave Michael Trangert a golden shower. Sorry about that, Michael, one more time. Anyway, my point is, Nuclear Blast was a life-changing experience, and I just want to say thank you very much, and I wish you guys the best. Rock and roll. Hell yeah.